Dragon's Den, The Great Spiritual Awakening and Omens. What am I on about? So in this video I'm going to talk about spirituality. But whenever I consider spirituality I'm a very logical person and I'm like quite scientific about it. So there's nothing you're going to have to make leaps of faith with or anything like that when I talk about spirituality unless I've it stands up to my logical reasoning and I've experienced it in my own life then I don't entertain it, it's just fantasy until I've experienced it. But there's certain things that you have to be very perspicacious and observant to actually see. And these are things that I would have missed in the past. But now I'm sort of, the more I learn about spirituality and religion and the more I keep my eyes open and look in my own life, I can kind of draw the connection. And I just, when I talk about this, I realised that a lot of people haven't come to this conclusion yet, but I think the more life experience you get and the more you pay attention you do. So I'm just talking about things, they are spiritual, but they're very real. And I think quantum physics is a bit like this. Quantum physics, I believe, is a science, but they talk about things that are very mystical and spiritual. So like quantum entanglement. Now I'm no quantum physicist, but I think it's it means that two particles or two waves or something at different ends of the universe can be connected in some way. Now that just sounds quite spiritual to me. Or, and that's almost like manifestation, you can influence the universe. Do you know what I mean? And that's quantum, quantum physics. And then another thing I think this is in quantum physics is that something can be a something can be a wave or a particle depending on whether it's being observed or not and that just doesn't seem very scientific to me that seems quite spiritual if you're looking at something it acts in a certain way and if you're not looking at it if it's unobserved it acts in a different way so i think the more science develops and the more it moves into like for example andrew huberman when he talks about meditation that is science merging, merging with spirituality and you can use the same techniques to analyse both. So he's a neuroscientist that, that would study like brain scans and things like that, I'm guessing. But then when he moves into meditation and now he's talking about God. So you've got scientists talking about God and I think that's very interesting. And I think moving forward, the line between science and spirituality is going to get, well, it's going to start to blur. So I'm going to talk about omens as well and I'm going to mention a very popular book that you've probably heard of and it's very good, I definitely recommend reading it but I'm learning about YouTube so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what the book is at some point later in this video and this is a technique YouTube has used to keep your interest and it's called, open, it's called creating an open loop. So I've just created an open loop and human nature is such that even if you're not interested in the video or what I'm talking about humans don't like open loops they like to close the loop so at some point and i'm not just going to put it right at the end because people would just skip to the end and figure out what book i'm i'm talking about so that's just uh, i don't like these techniques they're like psychological ways of making people watch the video for longer and stuff so if i tell you about them i don't feel as guilty but yeah so there's a book that's very good that i would highly recommend that's very popular so this story goes all over the place right we've got dragon's den the Great Spiritual Awakening, Omens and Stem Cells now. So I, I tend to have this ability to kind of see trends before they happen and do absolutely nothing about it, right? So I'll see something and sometimes they're bad trends. Like for example, I had mental health issues quite a while ago, like 10 years ago, and everybody around me seemed quite happy and I was... There wasn't any real traumatic event or reason why I'd be depressed. But I was like going through it when nobody else was. And I kind of predicted at the time, I said to the people around me, I was like, I'm going through this. I'm not sure why and I'm going to have to figure out how to fix it. But I reckon I'm like a precursor, you know, like the canary in the coal mine. I anticipated a lot of people having a lot of mental health issues. Because when I was going through it, just to speak about depression... It, we have a good vocabulary for it now. I've got poor mental health, depression, anxiety. Obviously those words did exist, but when I spoke to people to start with, I got depression, they didn't really understand. Now, it seems like you can talk to anyone and they will understand that. So I anticipated that. And 
and I think that's come to fruition. I think a lot of people do struggle with mental health and we're more aware of it. So I tend to see these things and it used to annoy me. I used to like make a prediction and when you know something's going to happen or you have a good idea that this could happen, you can kind of capitalise on it, can't you? Like if you invent something, like my granddad is an inventor and the amount of things he's invented that were extremely good products that he never acted on and then they've become very successful. Like he made, he designed an alarm clock that you plug into your mains, uh, you, you plug into your your light in your room and you set a time and about an hour before it starts turning the light on. So it, it's like the sun's rising. And then they created these light clocks and he actually went to a, a company to like get this developed and they just stole his idea. So it used to annoy me. I'd see these, I'd like make these predictions, not act on them and see somebody else act on it and sort of make something good out of it and then it would annoy me but now I just see them as omens and I've learnt that ideas are worthless it's action that actually makes an idea worth anything so you've probably had a million dollar idea sat on the toilet this morning and then another one in the shower but it takes energy coming up with ideas I don't think is that difficult but it takes energy to execute on an idea so now I see them as omens so what's an omen? So an omen is a sign or event thought to predict or foretell the future, often considered significant or of influence, right? So now I see these things when I make predictions or have assumptions and they come true, I see them as omens. And that's mentioned in the book that I was talking about. So that's probably why I, having read that book is probably why I am looking out for omens now and see them like that instead of just ideas that I didn't act on. And the acting on ideas thing, my friend, he's the total opposite to me. So we have a really complementary skill set. I'm the ideas guy and he's the action guy. So I can come up with ideas all day long that are very good ideas. And he takes action without thinking too much about it. And between us, we kind of make stuff happen now. But on our own, neither of us got a lot done. Because he had no ideas and was just acting on the same old ideas he's had for a long time. And I was having ideas and not acting on them. Right, so stem cells. So so one of the things that I've anticipated being a trend moving forward, and it's not really, I haven't predicted a trend, I'm just seeing a lot of people use this technology, and it's stem cells. And they are using, they're going to Colombia and certain places to get stem cells injected in their body to improve their health. Now, it's very expensive, and you might have ethical issues with doing that, but... I always like to look at how to boost stem cells naturally or whatever the so say it's increasing testosterone if people are using trt i tend to think well how do i increase testosterone naturally to the highest i can by eating certain foods and doing certain things so i did the same with stem cells looked into it and there are certain foods you can eat which are going to help boost stem cells right so i came up with this drink that involved a load of ingredients that I knew to be very beneficial and I even teased it in a couple of my videos and I'll put a clip I spoke about this a month ago and I had it as I was going to build it up as like a little secret I was going to put it in every video and build it up and just me and my friends knew about it and that's like the thing with a secret um, like secrecy makes people interested so I was going to use that as like a little thing and then eventually tell everybody what the recipe was you know, like Coca-Cola, nobody knows what the recipe is. So I thought that would be quite fun to just build up over time. Anyway, it didn't work out because I've got some digestive issues. That's why I eat on a very restrictive diet. I use an elimination diet. And I can't tolerate some of the ingredients. So I, I built this drink and it's very beneficial. If you can drink it, I would highly recommend drinking it. But for me, I can't drink it. So the drink is, this is going to... It's just a general health drink and there are loads of benefits and I'll tell you what they are. But I was specifically designing it to boost stem, stem cell production and to optimise stem cells for all the benefits that that brings. You know, reduce inflammation, anti-aging, increased testosterone, everything like that. So the drink is this. It's you take dark chocolate, the highest percentage cacao you can find. 
that's going to have flavonoids and antioxidants in it. So this is a high flavonoid drink, that's basically what this is. Coconut oil, that contains medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, which offer quick energy for the brain and they are using coconut oil and MCT oil for uh, like memory and cognitive problems like Alzheimer's and dementia. Very beneficial. Grass-fed beef butter, that's going to have omega-3 fatty acids in it, fat-soluble fat soluble vitamins A, E and K2, conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, butyrate, which has anti-inflammatory properties, milk, the closest thing to raw you can get, the milk I was using was pasteurised but unhomogenised. And then cacao powder, as dark as possible. That's going to have flavonoids, antioxidants, iron, magnesium, zinc, vitamins B6 and K. So I might do a little clip of how to make the drink. But you put all that in. It's like a hot chocolate drink that's got a lot of health benefits. And it was something i just come up with. And I was like, right, all these ingredients are very good. I want to make a secret drink. You know, like people drink Monster Energy and it's... For some people it's like there, or coffee. Uh, I'm not a caffeine drinker, but I wanted something. It's like a little ritual and I was gonna have it as my ritual and I was gonna brainwash myself with it and put like energy into it as a placebo effect. You can kind of convince yourself of certain things. They did a study where they give two groups of people a drink and told them, or there might've been three groups, and told them the effect this drink was gonna have so I'll, I'll try and get this right. So you've got three groups of people and you get given a drink. One group of people is just going to get given water, I think. It was a drink that had no nutritional benefit. The second group got a drink that was water that had no nutritional benefit, but they were being told it was a high protein. It was going to have some effect on them, essentially. And then the third group got given the drink that was high protein that did have the effect and then a f another group got a drink that that was high protein did have the effect but they got told it was water so do you see what I mean I've completely made that more complicated than it needs to be but essentially they were telling one group that this drink here drink this it's gonna make you build muscle they did build muscle because they were convinced it's high protein I think they've done this with steroids as well. They've given groups of people varying amounts of steroids and told them, like the group that had no steroids, right, we're giving you steroids here, you're going to get massive. And they had the same response to the guys that did actually have steroids. So basically what I'm describing is the placebo effect. The placebo effect is very real and it's very powerful and I was going to use that with this drink. The one problem was I can't actually drink it. So, and the reason is cacao is the seed of a plant and plants contain defense chemicals and they're most highly saturated in seeds because the seed is like the most important part of the plant isn't it that's like the baby of the main plant so if you eat leaves of a plant this is why I, I struggle to be vegetarian or eat um, veg is because I'm sensitive to the lectins so it's a defense chemical to stop things eating it and most people can get away with it and don't have any issues, but because of digestive problems, I can't do it. So yeah, the drink kind of, I had to stop drinking it. And dark chocolate contains caffeine and I think I'm sensitive to caffeine. So anyway, I've just had to get rid of the drink, but if you want to implement it, then go for it. That was the first part of the story. So I invented this drink a month ago. I didn't invent it. I just put it together, you know, and had the intention. I came up with the idea, had the intention. And I also saw it being very popular. I thought it could become a replacement for people that don't drink caffeine. Because you can go to Starbucks or Costa and just get whatever coffee you want. But I'm not sure, I mean, I don't drink coffee, so I don't go to these places, but I'm not sure if you can get a cacao drink. And I was learning about the ceremonial properties of cacao, and I like that. I think rituals and ceremonies are very important. And if you can anchor your day with it, like people anchor their day with caffeine that was my intention so bear that in mind 
So then here comes the omen from the universe, right? I was telling my friends about it and I'll, I put it in the video a month ago. And then my mum was just like, oh, I've just watched Dragon's Den. And there was this guy on there, you should check it out. He was proposing, his proposal was a cacao drink, right? So I looked at the episode and the guy looks like Russell Brand and he's a like hippie very spiritually aware, do you know what I mean? And he's promoting a cacao drink. Cacao, that's what his product is. So that's the omen. I get these little signs where I'm like, why did, you know, and it could just be the red car effect. The fact that I spoke about the cacao drink made my mum mention it to me. But it just seems, the timing seems odd. I could have decided to start drinking cacao at any time, but it's a month before this guy goes on Dragon's Den. And I just see that as the whole universe is connected, you know, so there's no difference between him coming up with the idea and me coming up with the idea. And when you're looking out for omens, those connections just become more obvious. So I believe the universe is cause and effect. And it is, like, again, this is not a spiritual thing, this is logical. So say I've got a stone in my hand and there's a pond over there me throwing the stone towards the pond you could call that the omen the omen that there's going to be a splash in the pond so if you couldn't see me you could just see the pond I essentially look like I can predict the future if I say there's going to be a splash in that pond and then throw a stone but the person I'm saying it to can't see me throw the stone they're like oh how did he predict that because it's cause and effect me throwing the stone caused the splash in the pond now the more spiritual and deep you go into it, the more you ask, well, if everything is connected, does it have to be directly connected? So me throwing the stone directly caused the splash in the pond. But if I'd crashed my car a week ago, I might, I might not have been near that pond with that stone in my hand. So did me not crashing my car a week ago cause me cause the, the splash in the pond you know at what point you can say right you throwing the stone caused the splash in the pond but me being born 27 years ago caused the splash in the pond because if I wasn't born that splash in the pond wouldn't happen so you see how that's logical that's scientific if that person wasn't born I mean maybe somebody else would have been born and thrown the stone at exactly the same time but I doubt it so you see how my whole life has brought me to the point of throwing the stone to splash in the pond. They can't be separated and nothing can be separated. The guy on Dragon's Den and me are not separate, just like every person isn't separate. So this is where it gets spiritual, but still very logical, right? So, so that's cause and effect, but everything causes all effects. So there's always a link. And this is where omens come in because you can't make the distinction between direct cause and effect and indirect cause and effect it's all the same so that was a bit of a side note so this guy's gone on dragon's den and what i found interesting was the response of the dragons to his proposal right so if you're unaware of what dragon's den is i think shark tank is a similar i think it's in the states or australia where you pitch an idea to businessmen right I'll put a link, it'll be the first link in the description of the a clip of the episode. And if you look, the BBC uploaded this two days ago or three days ago, so this is very recent. And I'll put a link to the video that I mentioned this a month ago. So it shows that the time, I haven't just said this afterwards. So he proposed to the dragons this cacao drink and he was doing, he was explaining that he'd gone on like a spiritual journey, found a Guatemalan shaman that taught him about the benefits of cacao and he said he told the dragons that he the businessman that he does like five hour ceremonies singing to this cacao and it's like a shamanic ceremony and he got them to do call and response so check out the episode but he got them to do call and response and they were getting involved he's like singing to them and they're singing back so 
I just found their response interesting because I think if he'd have gone on Dragon's Den five years ago and started singing and telling them that he sings to his cacao beans, they all would have looked at him and just said, you're off your head, we don't do business with hippies, and they wouldn't be interested in it, they wouldn't be receptive. They would have just not invested. But all of them showed interest, not all of them invested, but four out of the five would have invested. One guy, they kind of binned him off, they didn't want him involved. But the three that did invest, so one of them was like, I don't know about this singing to it, but it kind of makes sense. So it seemed, well, he didn't even say it kind of makes sense. He, you could just tell the, the cogs were turning and he was receptive to it. One of the other dragons, which was, uh, he runs a podcast, The Diary of a CEO. He was very into it. And then they were all very enthusiastic. And it wasn't the product or the business. It was the spiritual side of it that they were investing in, as far as I could tell. So one of the dragons even um, like lowered his percentage that he would get of the business just to be involved. Now, it still didn't seem like a very good deal to the guy that was, you know, proposing the business because I think he initially wanted to give away 5% of the business and ended up giving away 25% of the business. So, but that's neither here nor there. But they were all quite emotional about this proposal and it was because it was a spiritual proposal and less of a business proposal. So, and I've seen this shift in other influencers as well. I follow Hamza and the C he used to be called the CEO of Testosterone, some uh oh, forget what his name is. Jack Hopkins, maybe. And they're both moving towards more spiritual things. And I've kind of anticipated this. This is another thing that I kind of saw coming. And I was, you know, going to the monastery ten years ago and now I'm just thinking, oh yeah, people are gonna become more receptive to this so me and my friend was talking about the progression of people and people tend to start off going after money and materialism then that deteriorates their health and they see the value in health and then they think all oh, right I'll spend some of this money buying my health back and then when they're healthy and they're financially stable then they move on to spirituality and I kind of did it backwards I had nothing and I was, you know, thinking about the spirituality. Then I was went on to health. And now I'm trying to work out the money thing. Because you need all three, as far as I can tell. And these dragons looked exactly... That was the expression. Like, these dragons were... Were sort of proving this point. Because they all have money. That's why they're on the show. And the cacao drink offered health and spirituality. So they're interested in all three. They've started off with the money and they're willing to spend the money on, the, on this guy's business to get health and spirituality. Now, if somebody just turned up without the, the shamanic ceremony and all that and just said, I sell cacao beans, well, you can already buy them in Tesco. Do you know what I mean? So I see this as a signpost moving forward as what the, the 2030s are going to look like. A lot more people being receptive to spirituality and people being in balance about the three. You need money, you, well, about the four that I talk about, belief, health, wealth and relationships. So yeah, that was my little story. Oh, I almost forgot, I almost forgot to tell you the book. So the book is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Very good book. So yeah, that's just a little story, a little omen that I've had recently. And I'll try and mention these, and this is another reason why I make the YouTube videos, because I get these ideas and these predictions, and then when they happen, I've got no record that I said them. And it's not like, it doesn't matter, I'm not that bothered, I'm not like, oh, see, told you this was going to happen, because it's it doesn't really make much difference. It's Everything's cause and effect. But I like to have a little record, so... Yeah, moving forwards, I'll speak more about these and just the omens that I experience in my life. We was driving to the um, driving to the gym the other day with two of my mates, and Elliot saw as we was driving past there was a field full of sheep, and he saw this sheep with two um, oh what type of bird are they? Magpies on its back, and he was like, oh, don't magpies mean something? And you've got 
One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, five for gold, seven for a story yet to be told. I didn't actually know there was that many, I just thought it was three. Um, so that's what magpies mean. And he was like, oh, but they're on a sheep, so that's got to mean something else. And if you Google spiritual meaning of a sheep, it's childlike innocence, right? So if you combine the two, so we've like hybridized this sign. You've got a sheep, which represents childlike innocence, with two magpies on its back. And he said it was just funny how they, the sheep's like facing that way, and the two magpies are just looking in our direction. I didn't see it, but... So you combine the two, so two magpies for joy and a sheep is childlike innocence. And when us three get together, we are just very like jovial and childish. Do you know what I mean? Some of the stuff we do is childish and joyful. We're never miserable or sad. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. The Sunday, and Sunday is like our ritual day. We'll go to the gym, we'll go and eat a decent breakfast. And then we'll, now we've added going to Core Abbey to a monastery to like soak up some of the energy, light a candle and all of that so yeah now we're looking out for omens but be interesting any omens in your lives that you've noticed let me know have a good day boys see you tomorrow so i just thought i might have people going oh you say you're you're not spiritual you just work with logic and you've just googled spiritual sign of a sheep but the sheep is you know, a common symbol in the Bible. And any time I see like Bible stories or like the magpie one is a, a, an old wives tale, but things that get passed down, like from generation to generation, I see as quite authentic. So they may not mean anything or they may not be, you know, scientific. But again, you don't know how cause and effect, you don't know how two magpies sat on a sheep can affect reality. Do you know what I mean? You don't know at what point something causes something else. But yeah, so I will admit that does take a bit of a leap of faith that two magpies on a sheep is scientific. So I get it. I'm just waiting for the comments going, oh, you said you, you only deal with science and now you're talking about magpies on a sheep. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs>